Welcome to Trail Manners, the podcast so dedicated to mountain trails and running that they broadcast out of a 78 Volkswagen bus in the mountains. Who does that? Eric and Joel are your hosts and will bring you the trail life as you may have not heard it before. You hear about everything from gear reviews, nutrition to keep you upright and moving forward, and they'll even bring guests into the bus for conversations that you won't hear anywhere else. It's time for some running adventures on a higher elevation. The old 78 Volkswagen bus is fired up and headed to the mountains. Here are your hosts for Trail Manners, proudly representing the 801 with their passion and love for the trails, Eric Manning and Joel Hatch. Welcome to the Trail Manners Podcast, episode number 123. Today, we're going to be talking with Mark Hammond. If this is your first time listening, then thanks for coming. The Trail Manners Podcast is produced every week for your enjoyment, and show notes are found at trailmanners.com. Come back often, and please feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Trail Manners. All links are in the show notes. Now let's get after it. All right, welcome back to another edition of the Trail Manners Podcast, back on our Tuesday weekly spots. Today we've got a, uh, well, you know what, let's, let's roll out the red carpet for our guest today. Yeah. Uh, today we've got Mark Hammond on the podcast, and if you've listened to our podcast over the last year or so, we bring Mark up quite a bit, just because he's a local guy. Yeah. Salt Lake here, and uh, he's and we always said early that he was flying under the radar. Right. Because, you know, he wouldn't get mentioned in these big races, but mm-hmm. it's... Um, people's mistakes. So we got him on the show. He was gracious enough to take the time to uh, meet us. So Mark, how are you today? Good, thanks. Nice. Thanks for having me. Yeah, nope. This is the first time we've met Mark. Yeah, it is. And so sometimes those are fun shows. Right. If we've known somebody, we have uh, chemistry maybe. Sure. Right? Or know their background, because uh-huh. me and Joel are a bunch of, bunch of jokers. So today's our first day talking to Mark, and he took the jump, and we couldn't be happier to have you on the show. So um, before we start, let's. Uh, how about a little intro about kind of... Who you are, and then kind of prep go into how you got into running. Okay. Um, I've been active in the outdoors since I was a little kid. Uh, first, it was mostly fly fishing, just walking up and down rivers all day. Nice. And then when I was about 14, my brother got me into rock climbing. So we climbed all over, bouldering, sport climbing, uh, and then eventually like trad and big wall. Hmm. Um, and then when I was about 18, I got into backcountry skiing. And that's where I really built my aerobic fitness. Right. And I didn't really get into running consistently until my late 20s. But okay. but all throughout my younger years, I would do occasional trail running. So did you? was most of that stuff you're talking about, were you, are you from here? Like the fly fishing was, are you Utah born yeah, and bred yep. then? Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I was born in uh, Cottonwood Heights and raised okay. there. Yep. Well, I mean, all the stuff you mentioned is you kind of couldn't pick a a lot better spots I know, for all right? those events, right? You do Fly all fishing, that over climbing, there, except big wall and climbing. Yeah. You yeah. go down to Zion. Yeah, yeah Zion. That's right? my first big wall. So. Yeah. Gotcha. And, uh, oh, I should say, I didn't do any competitive sports in high school. I was in choir. You were in choir? <laughs> I was in choir so, in high school? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with Are that. Are you serious? Yeah. I did not know that. I was in men's choir, the the like the like dress-up choir, and I was in the choir where we danced and sang yeah, in high school. Yeah, the show school. choir. Yeah, I was <laughs> in that. Went to Disneyland and did what that. What the hell? Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, that's... That's not getting out. I hope yeah, no one's listening to this. Oh. Yeah, I was in We're going to have a talent show. I was in drama, choir. Dude, that would be awesome. Yeah. You bust out some songs. I could very easily. <laughs> the choir teaches you good breathing technique. That's right. Yeah. I like how you guys are spinning this. It is. It teaches, uh-huh. you, yeah, it teaches you how to wear a bow tie pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> I remember rocking a cummerbund back in the day. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. See? Yeah, right there. There's, There's some tension, and I right get there. it. I get it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I just haven't, I haven't bloomed I like he yet. has yet. <laughs> I'm not as talented yet, but <laughs> yet <laughs> still a couple of years. I see, I got time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's cool. So most of that was done in Utah because your your uh, your racing goes back quite a uh, I'm gonna say quite a while, but like on Ultra Sign Up, I think like 2013, I think was the first documented race they show. Right. Yeah, I think that was uh, was it the well, the Wasatch Powder Keg. That's a schema race. Yeah. Right. Then, I saw those uh, I on think there. The Leadville. Marathon was my first marathon. Nice. Uh, yeah. And you didn't run in school or anything like that? Nope. <sighs> no. Nope. Just, just sang. Sang. And, but, I, you know, I was way into climbing and skiing in high school, so, you know, building my fitness all through that time. Yep. Plus, he had a good, he had good lungs from breathing. And yeah, that's quiet. right. you got to hold some of those notes a long time. Trust yeah. me. I know this <laughs> from experience. i got some good photos. I'll show you someday. 
Um, and so what do, you, what do you do for a living? You were mentioning that you work for the Forest Service. That's right. I work for a, a private contractor, but we're, we're on site at a Forest Service office uh, doing mapping. Right. So GIS and remote sensing, you know, we, we study how the forests are changing through you know, fires and disease and right. you know, man-made stuff and that kind of thing. We've got a lot of big fires this year. Yeah, there's a little ch- couple changes going <laughs> right. on, right? <laughs> yeah, it seems like the fires are getting more intense every year. Yeah, so. it really does. They're getting big and yeah, r- I don't know, burning everything. Yeah, right. So you kind of have a contract. You've been working mapping for quite a while. Yeah, about uh, six years. And how huge of an advantage is that when you go into a hundred mile race? Because you just you look at it, you know exactly. It's like pff, oh, yeah, right? profiles on the website. <laughs> the <laughs> irony is, I'm not that good at studying course maps. I don't know. <laughs> really, <laughs> I, I've gotten lost in quite a few races. So. <laughs> we won't tell your boss that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it's like couldn't see the map. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but the the mapping job uh, gives me a love of. Geography and landscapes. Right. Yeah. So it's more incentive to go run these long races. Oh, I bet. That's awesome. Yeah. So when did you, like, find that trail running was kind of your thing? Like, that was something. Because you've, you've done a lot of races, and I'm sure you have other hobbies still. But when was it that you kind of turned and said, this, this is all right, and I'm, I, I can do this? Um, I mean, since my early 20s, I remember doing laps on olympus in my early 20s and like really liking the, sh- the shorter trail runs right so and then, you know and with um climbing and backcountry skiing you know that it, that sometimes involves some running on trails to, right. to get to where you want to go oh for sure yeah so so i built that love early on um and then you know, I, I think my first ultra was the Mill Creek 50K. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah the night one. one. That's awesome. Yeah. The unofficial, official race. Right, yeah. yeah. So uh, after I did that, I'm like, this is pretty cool. And I did Speed Goat like two weeks later. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty cool. I'll go tackle one of the hard, hardest ones now. Yeah. And I think I did my first 100 run, rabbit run uh, a few months after that. So wow. Kind of jumped, jumped right in. Yeah. Wow. You know, but I, I'd gotten used to long days in the mountains. Yeah. Uh, you know, from climbing and skiing. So. Exactly. Yeah. And that's kind so, of Joel's history of running, right. is he did the climbing, skiing, and would run to and from right. climbing. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> it was his fast way to get down off the climbing route. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That just makes sense. It, it does. And it, it's really fun having that big pack on your back and you're running downhill. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's a good way to crash, trash those quads. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. That's how a lot of us bigger runners just feel daily. So <laughs> <it's not laughs> um, well, I mean, one, I mean, one of the things the last couple of years i don't know what what it's been i mean it's just it seems like the last couple of years you've been i don't know getting higher profile races um kind of placing higher in those things i mean you've done run and rabbit run what five times five times and finished <laughs> second five times right uh three times three times okay yeah. so i mean you, three in a you row. you're definitely yeah. dialing it in more right. um what's changed are you putting more time into that maybe and not as other just stuff or what's the, the experience I, I am putting more volume uh, in, in the past few years, I've, I've uh, cracked 100 miles in my training weeks pretty regularly. Really? So, yeah. Um, and I find that's very doable with a treadmill. <laughs> oh, oh gotcha. man. Yeah. So really? I <laughs> probably do like 60% of my training on treadmills. Wow. Just because it's so wow. convenient. Yeah. You know, I can roll out of bed and hop on and like read a book in the morning and are you, do you live pretty afternoon. close to the trails, or is it kind of a drive for you? Like, it's, I mean, if you lived over here, right, that takes a while to get over there. Yeah, I mean, I live in Mill Creek. Okay, so, uh, that's so it's not crazy far, but yeah. still, like, you know, time's tight on weekdays. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I feel like I can just focus on workouts more on a treadmill than I can when I'm just outside Running. in nature. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get, get a little distracted. So are you more, like, have more focused training um, on the treadmill, like your work on treadmills, more of a focused effort or focused things. Exactly. So you okay. put 60 miles a week in on a treadmill. If I, I did the math, if right. on a hundred mile week, right? Yeah, there yeah, are more. I mean, I, I think I did like a couple of 130 mile weeks getting ready for Western and UTMB on a treadmill. Uh, not all on a treadmill. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say my treadmill would just start smoking. <laughs> yeah. It's like kind of half on my home treadmill and then half on a gym treadmill. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was, for a minute when you said that, I'm like, so you must at work, you must have a treadmill, and you work on, and you run, and, and just... You could. Yeah, because I'm like, that's a lot of time on a treadmill. Yeah. You know, I mean, how I actually got into uh, competitive running was I started this job with the Forest Service, and I didn't like sitting for eight hours straight, so I started running during lunch breaks, 
right here on the Jordan River Parkway. Oh, okay. okay. So that's yeah. where it all began, really. Okay. Nice. Um, well, let's let's skip forward. We're going to talk about this year. Okay. And we'll we'll be all over the place. But this year has been kind of a a big year for you in terms of the races you've done and just how you've done. Um, so we'll start off. Uh, we're talking about some of the big ones. You went over and did uh, Utah Trail, Mount Fuji. Utah Trail. Ultra, Ultra trail. trail. I mean Utah. Utah. I saw you. Trail. It's, it's a new one. Trail. It's uh, Utah Trail Mount Fuji. It's really big. It's right next to this uh, sushi place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ultra Trail Mount Fuji. Yeah. Um, was that your first experience over there? Yeah. Yeah. How, yep. So tell me about that because that's this the overseas trips got me intrigued. It's just in Japan. Yeah. What's the What's the culture like there around trail running? running. Uh, it's. Very enthusiastic. Yeah. I mean, it's not as much as, uh, like, UTMB. Yeah. But I was very impressed with with uh, just the the interest the Japanese have in the sport and, like, the media coverage and, yeah. Well, a lot of the Japanese runners have had big years this year. Um, and Chinese you know, runners, too. Chinese, too, yeah. That's right. Um, what, That's what got you, what made you decide to go do that race? Was there just wanting to go over there? Or, I mean, because that's, that's a little jump from, say, a run rabbit run or because it's a yeah. trip. So how did you get into that one? Um, it's part of the Ultra Trail World Tour. Mm-hmm. And if you podium at a World Tour race, then the organization will pay for you to go somewhere else. Oh, oh I did not know. They're so, training harder. That's right. awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, because I podiumed at Western the year before, I was right. able to pick UTMF. Oh, oh that's okay. really cool. Yeah. And so that was like a paid yeah. trip. Yeah. Oh well, there's a I would do that <laughs> no in brainer, a heartbeat. Right? Yeah. Yep. So that's, that's awesome. cool. How was how was the course compared to, say, a Western or a Run Rabbit Run? I mean, what was the course over there like? Uh, much more difficult. Yeah. A lot yeah. more technical and vert or what? Yeah, it's kind of yin and yang over there. <laughs> uh, well, it was twenty seven thousand vert. Oh my goodness. But it's like it's either like. Crazy steep, yeah, or just flat in the city. Oh, okay. You know, so you got to be really good at pole. Pavement running, yeah, quite a bit of city pavement running. Okay, and then it's like when you get in the mountains, they don't believe in switchbacks. Wow. It's like you know, it's like the West Ridge of Grandeur. You're just okay. going straight, up, straight or up or straight down. Okay, wow. So, and I did not adequately prepare for that race. Gotcha. Because I was coming off a of ski season. And I had not spent much time running down steep hills, and that was a big mistake. Gotcha. Yeah, so my quads, quads were, were just strapped. wrecked. In the last quarter, I was just hurting so bad. <laughs> wow. So were, did you know much about that course before you went over? Like, did you know about the climbs? They weren't more switchbacks, but they were more straight up. I mean, did you look into that? I heard there were a lot, you know, a lot of steep climbs, but it was even more than I thought. Hmm. And and a lot of it is in the last quarter, which oh, is just geez. harsh. Oh, my it's just mean. I mean like a lot of there's a lot of hand lines. It's so steep. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. They so flip that and have you guys run the off so Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. See if they can do that for you next year. Yeah. What, we'll see. What was the distance on that one? 106. 106. Yeah. And you finished eighth though. Yeah. Still, even That's with good. having the yeah, th- was, you weren't ready coming, for it. That's, yeah. It was okay. Coming Considering off of that you haven't been running. Really? Yeah, Over the winner. As, right. It wasn't as ideal. I mean, I I was in fifth until mile ninety. God, <laughs> yeah, it hurt to lose those three positions. In the yeah, that's all right. Though. It was really interesting. I was back and forth with the top Japanese runner for seventy miles through pretty much the entire hanging race. out together the whole time. Yeah, and then uh, I thought I had him. I, I beat him uh, on a big descent to the last aid station, and then. After that, his main Japanese rival catches up, Uh-oh. and it's like they teamed up yeah. and just whooped me on the last climb. <laughs> <laughs> it was really something. Yeah. Probably did. They probably were talking to you understand, and they were like, just, you know, hey, let's work this guy. Let's, right. let's go. Let's yeah. When you were over there, did you, get a, did you have a peek at some of the rivers and creeks over there? Because they got good fly fishing over there. Do you still I fly didn't. fish? I do. I just, okay. Yeah. In fact, I'm going tomorrow. Yeah. Are you going to do that uh, fly flyathon? Flyathon. Yeah. I've heard of that. I want to do it. Yeah. yeah. That looks cool. We should we should set up one on the Provo River. That'd be awesome. There you go. You know, that'd be a good. I bet spot. you. I bet you we'll see more of those after this year. Yeah. Yeah. They're starting to catch on. Take a little tin car rod. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. What, so you didn't do it. Did you? Were you able to? Be, you know, be over there for a little while besides the race and kind of take some of that in, or was it kind of a out, get there, get home. Yeah, my wife and I, and I were there for a week, so we did some climbing. Oh, awesome. And just kind of wandered like around. some sports climbing? Sport climbing. Okay. Yep, that's nice basalt rock. And uh, we wandered around Tokyo. And um, Was that just nutty? 
Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the biggest city in the world, right? I didn't know that. I didn't, I didn't know, know that. that I didn't know that. Yeah. There's a lot of people it's, crammed in there, Yeah, right? it's like 40 million people. <laughs> 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 That's a lot. I'd be out. I'd be yeah. like, sorry. <laughs> was it overwhelming? I mean, how do you navigate that? It was crazy, because I made the mistake of renting a car. Oh. And the, I mean, those streets are so narrow. Yeah. And it's such a chaotic city. Because you hear those people are really, like, they're, they're really um, respectful. Yeah, they're very courteous. Yeah. Even when they're behind the wheel? So they, they uh, actually, yeah, for the most right part. On. So it was just more, I don't know. I mean, I'm driving on the other side of the road. And oh, they do that? Environment they and, do that. Oh, yeah, man. so. That's crazy. Yeah, it was quite the adventure. <laughs> I get, that's uh, a lot of people, though. It's a lot of people. What about the food? Did you get to, uh, like, fully embrace that? Yeah, as much as I could. Um, I thought the best place we went was the uh, sushi conveyor belt. Joint. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have you been to one of those? I, I haven't, I've but seen I've seen them. one. Yeah, I've never been to one either. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that was that was the hit for us. Uh, you hit any ramen? Yeah, some ramen. That Super was tasty. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, oh, this is how ramen's supposed to taste. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's kind of like big here in the States now. Ramen's yeah. like all the rage. Yeah, it's getting big now. Ramen mm-hmm. houses, and yeah. which I'm happy. I, yeah, the ramen house we have up in Ogden, I like it. I think it's tasty. Yep. So after when Mount Fuji was what month? That was April. April, so early in the season. And then when you got yeah. back from there, did you kind of turn full-on focus western states is that kind of how that flipped yeah i mean i took like two weeks off and then got into western training yeah uh-huh. and what was your training like for western because i mean it's a big race and you know the course now you know the course this is and your second year right yep so what was what was what's your training like is that when you get you know those peak hundred plus mile weeks then you said uh-huh yeah yeah so um i tried to focus on more downhill running i actually did more downhill than uphill right so and that's easier to do with the treadmill Right. Oh, down your treadmill. Yeah. yeah. Decline. So I actually oh, I put one. bricks underneath the back of it. So oh. You can decline more. All right. That makes so what's sense. your what, what kind of decline you think you have on that? Um, like you make a guess. Ten percent. <laughs> Four brick decline. Yeah. Well, I actually, I, <laughs> exactly. I had it at ten percent for. Um, That's pretty steep. Uh, for a while, and then I, 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 yeah, <laughs> I broke it. The, the treadmill? Much. Yeah, I was running like a six-minute mile on 10% decline, and oh, it, it like broke the belt. Oh, my gosh. Oh, what happened? Uh, did you I, get hurt? So it, did you call no, Brian? No, I was fine. I'm like, dude, you got to give me a better treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> no, I couldn't do that. But it has, it has a lifetime warranty, so. Gotcha. Yeah, you you gotta can just tell them what, what happened. I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No, I don't know what happened. I don't know whether there's brick dust on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, I had to mellow out with the decline on my home treadmill. Now it's like it. A seven percent decline. I don't go faster than a seven and a half in a mile. Oh, oh that's good. So slow. That's good. <laughs> no, right? Seven and a half. I'm like, I tried to hit that this morning, but on a real trail. <laughs> when you're it. falling, yeah, yeah. When yeah. I fell. But I before didn't. I had the home treadmill, um, I would just put on a weight vest at the gym treadmill, and they only have a three percent decline. Right. And but with the weight vest, it would feel more like you know seven or ten. So yeah, it's a little bit more. And then, so Western this year, you knew the course. Um, you cut off 40-plus minutes this yeah. year, yeah, which is awesome. Yeah, and uh, some of that has to do with the course being in a lot better shape. Last okay. Year, right? Because last year was ridiculous. The, because the first, of the snow? Uh, yeah, like the first 20 miles were just a mess of yeah. snow and mud, mud. And, and all that. So that was very inefficient running on that. However, this year was hotter. Quite a bit hotter. You do so. okay in the heat? Are you yeah, that bother? You do yeah, okay. I think with all like my lunch runs on the Parkway and on the West Ridge, especially, mm. uh, I, I can handle the heat pretty well. Okay. So, so yeah, I, it's hard to say like, um, you know, how much faster I would have run with the same conditions this year, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like overall I was more fit. I ran better. You know, I focused more on downhill speed. Um, but still, in the last 40 miles, and the course gets pretty flat, it was amazing how much faster Jim was going than anyone else. Really? That he just, that's when he destroyed the whole field, hmm. was that last 40. What did Jim finish in this year? Was 14, it? 1433. 1433. Wow, that's right. Yeah. That's pretty fast. Yeah, it's just in the right. zone in that, in that kind of terrain. Yeah. Right. And then, so you, but you took, you came in third again. Yeah. Who took second? I'm trying to remember. Francois Dehane. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. Frank, we call him Frank on yeah. the show. He's We're on first name basis. <laughs> We're on first name basis, and those O's and I's mess me up. So, 
I so. thought I had him. I really did. But did you? Yeah, he did. I mean, he had Sands pacing him, who was yeah. last year's winner, and yeah, he did great finishing it out. So, did you have pacers with you out I there? Didn't. You, did you go no pace, no That's crew, like or did you hear. have a crew? Um, I had my wife and a friend crewing. Okay, so awesome. Helpful. But the whole hundred, no pacers. no pacers, no pacers. No, that's what we like to hear. That's awesome. That's just, yeah, you get more cred in our book yeah. than that. Oh, more, cool. totally. We're, we talk about no pace, no crew races and stuff. Yeah, quite a bit. And I think for the elites, they should not have pacers. Yeah, I'm sorry. In Run Rabbit Run, you can't yeah. have a pacer. Yeah, right? yeah. see? And That's UTMB, you can't have a pacer. Exactly. So, I don't know where they put a pacer at UTMB. <laughs> There's too many people. <laughs> There's so many there. damn people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? No, I think so. it's. I, I like that idea, and I like. I mean, that's one of the structures with Run Rabbit Run that's cool, is. Mm-hmm. Because the hares can, or the tortoises can have pacers, right? Right. But the hares cannot. Yeah. So I think that's pretty cool. And I know a local guy by the name of Carl Meltzer would be all on board with that. Yeah, I think so. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, Carl helped create Run, Rabbit, Run. Yeah. Right. Yep. And that was pretty one of his little, yeah, no pacers. Right. I think that's awesome. That's right. Oh, that's right. He's kind of anti-pole. Yeah. Well, he's used them, but yeah, he's for big races. Yeah, for that AT thing that he did. Yeah. Yeah. A little jaunt through the woods. Back east. So, um, for Western States this year, finishing third again, um, how did the race itself go for you? I mean, did it play out how you thought it would? I mean, cutting time off with, you know, the course conditions changed, but you did have the heat. Right. How did you feel after it was over? Did you say, yep, I, that was what I had, or, man, I, I had another gear I didn't get, could have got to, or how'd that go out? <laughs> uh, I felt I felt more spent than last year. Yeah? Yeah. Just the effort? Yeah, the effort, and I, I got pretty behind on calories in the last 15 miles. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I was really spent. I didn't look nearly as fresh, I, I, and I puked on the track. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. Like before you finished? But, no, after. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I'm like, <laughs> and awesome. and thank like during they interviewed me after I finished, and during the whole interview, I'm like, oh, please don't puke, like, please don't. <laughs> you and don't they, even know. I held it until after the interview. Like you have no idea what you were saying because in your mind, yeah, you're exactly. Thinking, he's don't just puke. focusing, yeah. right? They're yeah. asking him questions. He's like, yeah. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> you go over Pal's shoes. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> not, not the first, I'm sure. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, so, f- you know, the and the last, so from no hands, that's a long, that feels long, I mean, in my realm. Doesn't that seem far to you? Like, it says it's only You're so many miles. Me, like, I know what this well, is. Well, it's like from no from the bridge at the end to the finish, that just seems to go for a long time. It does, yeah. I mean, it's like. A significant climb, yeah, like 500 feet or I don't know, something like that, 400. Um, and I honestly, I walked most of that last climb. You did? <laughs> did you know where you were? And you're like, hey, I'm locked in here at three, so I can you probably know the do a little wasn't bit. Close enough. Yeah, I was asking about that, and like they told me at no hands that Charmin was like 15 back. I'm like, okay, I pretty much got this. Yeah. So, and I knew Francois was out of reach. You know, okay. He was 15 ahead. So, so you're just trying to like conserve and enjoy the last little stretch as much as you could. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah? Yeah. And it was funny. I was walking up the hill, and some guy's like, oh, don't feel bad. Like, Scott Jurek always walked this hill. <laughs> I'd be like, looking at him like, what? <laughs> what does that have to do? Scott Jurek never raced Walmsley. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be something? Like, get a video game with all the old timers, oh, yeah. with the new school guys. Yeah. With, like, a video game. that. But still, I mean, if you base it off of ability, Walmsley's still going to win. On that course, yeah. I'm not going to say. I know anything. what you. I know what you're saying. Where are you going with this? Yeah, yeah. I don't, running's different. Like I have the debate all the time with people about team sports. Right. Like when they're like, "Oh, so and so is better than so and so 50 years ago." Oh, I, like, I know what you mean. Like, like LeBron's better than Jordan. Yeah, kind of or even further back, right? Dr. J. I'm like, well, things were different. They didn't have first class and massage they didn't and have first no class. they were piled in buses and ice packs and they didn't have all the <laughs> they, they put them on ice and shipped them yeah that's how they did it <laughs> it's like now runners have specific fueling. they have more tool sets yeah now. there's they're, more they're tools tool there's thicker. fueling there's before people are carrying like boda right. bags and canteens and shoes on. everything else he's a shoeless runner oh well, there we go on the asphalt tip hats off i bet he doesn't do it in the summer <laughs> it's too hot um, so Western States, you kind of, you kind of, you did well there. We were yeah. super psyched. I mean, again, come on, pulled yeah. in two years in a row. Yeah, I, I actually bonked pretty hard at mile twenty. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> really? I did. Yeah, what I don't was know going how, on there? I don't know if I just like forgot to fuel for a little while. Got excited, or, um, but yeah, I was like, uh, just before Duncan, I was kind of a mess. <laughs> what's then, the uh, what's the start like on that thing? Because it looks crazy. You just like got what two thousand <laughs> feet of climbing, and everybody's so excited. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, it's not nearly as crazy as UTMB. Well, yeah, yeah that's different. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I felt like everyone was pretty well behaved this year. They were? The start. Yeah, the yeah. last climb. Um, and Jim, even, even Jim was, like, not going too hard. He was sticking with Francois. So did you run well, like, most of it? Did you run like most of the race or the first half of the race? Was there like a little group you were in, or were you just kind of in your own thing? Um, I found myself running with the Cowboys quite a bit. Like okay, Tim Frerichs and yeah. Cody Reed and uh, Sensman. And that. Okay, the yeah. Quesadilla Cowboys. The, quesa- the <laughs> Quesadilla <laughs> Cowboys. Yeah, Quesadilla. Quesadillas. <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't with Tim and Cody when they uh, saw a bear. Oh, yeah. There's like a bear running after him, I guess. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh, I didn't hear that part. I mean, I've heard a bear on the course in the past. Yeah, like later in the race. Yeah, yeah later in the race. Yeah, he ran a bear later on. That's right, he did. Finish, yeah. He kind of got like... <clears throat> go around him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But if you're a bear and you look at Jim, that's not even worth your time. Right, because he's so skinny. He's, he's got no meat, meat on his Yeah, because <laughs> you're looking right? at it going... <laughs> but one, one of those other cowboys, they're kind of stocky, you know, they've got a lot of muscle. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. They're just... Appetizer. There's not a... There's not... I don't... That's not appealing. You'd like a runner with a little more meat yeah. bones? Give me some give me some give me some grease. <laughs> <laughs> I ran by a mama bear and its cub at the Alpine of Slick Rock fifty a couple of years ago. Oh, That's really? an old race. Yeah, Holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. That is bad. Yeah. We were I was pacing Jim Skaggs at Wasatch this year and we were going we just left um, Upper Big Water and the runner's coming back towards us. Yeah. It was nighttime and he's like, oh, I think there's a bear up here. And I was like, cool. And they were like, people are coming back. And I'm like, let's go check it out. Let's go look. There's enough people. So yeah. it was end up being a moose. It was dark. We shine oh. our headlamps. It was just a moose. It's been grunting. I think it's following me. It was just a moose. And it was just sitting eating. So I'm like, totally <laughs> loose. <laughs> <was>. <laughs> I'm like, I think he's just eating. I think we're good. Um, okay. So Western States. And then next up was UTMB. Yeah. Well, how did your training differ from that? So you get down with Western States. Re- how long is your recovery on Western States? Uh, it was longer than usual. So What's your actually, recovery like? What do you do? A couple weeks. Yeah, it was interesting. At, at the award ceremony of Western, I told Francois I was doing UTMB, and he's like, he said, just take two weeks off after this race. Mm-hmm. You know, just rest your mind as much as your body. So I did that. However, um, I tweaked my quad pretty bad at Western. Okay. And it wasn't until later on I realized, oh, I really injured this thing. Uh-oh. So recovery took longer. It took me like a month to really get okay. back into my groove. Right. Um, and I just I couldn't do much downhill running. Okay. Yeah. So my training for UTMB wasn't as good as I was hoping for. Um, I did put in two pretty big weeks, like, uh, let's see, I think 230-mile weeks with like 37,000 vert each wow. week. So. That's some big stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I did uh, a lot of pole hiking on Grandeur, so I tried to get used to that. Now, was this your first UTMB? Yeah. Okay. So this is your first time over at UTMB. What was that like? <clears throat> I mean, how different was that from all so the other races you've done? How far out did you get there? Did you get there a week out? Oh, uh, we got there like four days before. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't so really didn't get a chance to get on the course? No. Yeah. No. Um, I guess that helps some, but I didn't get lost. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's good. That's a good. That's a start. Okay, it's pretty well marked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, so with you with UTMB, the you've come did Mount Fuji this year. You've done other races, and you, even earlier you said it, you, Mount Fuji's not like UTMB. Was that just a eye opening experience? Was it hard to stay calm? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like I, I tell you what, they do a good job of making that start just epic yeah right you know like they're playing this theme song through the whole town yeah and and just the the number of spectators is like nothing i've ever seen in a trail race right tara said that they've got these drums going banging it like yeah. hours before yeah uh-huh. <laughs> it's kind of like what would she describe it as uh, the Hunger Games. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> I haven't get, seen that. But yeah. It's, it's yeah. kind of like the Hunger Games. It's like getting ready to get fed to something. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it, it's very epic feel. Um, it's interesting. They just just before the start, they play the theme song, <laughs> and there is no countdown to the start. Oh, it just all of a sudden someone someone go. screams, "Go!" Yeah, <laughs> and then you're sprinting for your life, and then you're sprinting. You know, yeah. and this is a hundred miler with thirty three thousand vert. And people are sprinting like it's a 5K. Right. <laughs> and there's not much room. You're in right. a pretty But you have to sprint. Corridor, but you have to sprint or you, or you get trampled. knocked over. Like yeah. Alex right. Nichols got knocked over. A couple other guys did. Yeah. Right. So, oh it's, yeah, it's a stampede. <laughs> and, the, and there's just people lining the streets for miles and miles and miles. Like, it's just like nothing else. That's awesome. On that you know, start, when you're running so fast, 
how long did it take you to get to the point where you kind of just settled down and got into a groove? Um, I'd say like two or three miles. Like yeah. a 5K. Yeah, then it kind of <laughs> opens up a bit more. It's okay. like, okay, chill out. This is an all-day race all night. <laughs> So. It's going to take a while. Let's yeah. slow down. Yeah, right? <laughs> but, but then, like, you know, these spectators, they get right up in your face, and they're just, like, screaming at you. So You have no it, idea it what they're, if they're happy, if they want to punch you, <laughs> yeah, right. if your hair's out of place. You don't know why they're yelling at you. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it takes a lot of skill to go out at the right pace of that race. I'll yeah. Say that. A, lot of, a lot of discipline. Yeah. yeah. And especially, like, if you're an elite, you're forced to start right at the front. Yeah. They make you do that. So they have you kind of off to the side to start, right? They like wait before, for you. before you don't have to line so everybody's early. lining up, say like an hour beforehand. You got to be to the side, right? Um, and then they kind of call you up, and you get to go to the front. They announce you. No, I mean I just okay. We got to work on that for next year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just I just walked up like a half hour before, and they saw right. my number and said, "You go this way." Okay. And then, so they and like it's they kind of like parade you. Right. That's uh, what I mean. Yeah. They, they kind of like show you showcase off. Yeah, you off. Yeah, they showcase you. Yeah. Right. Exactly. They're like walking the Greyhounds before the race starts. <laughs> yeah. so you know it's what like you're the, betting on. It's like the, the price is right. <laughs> yeah. You, you get up there and you walk across the stage. Yeah. That's, yeah, exact, that's how it is. That's why we like to stay away from the elite. We don't like the pressure of being up there. <laughs> yeah, right? That's, that's why. Exactly that's why. why. <laughs> okay. As long as we get uh, that dialed in. <laughs> and it was interesting. Um, I was kind of standing off to the side of the elite corral, and Walmsley comes and he stands by me. I think he was hoping to, like, avoid the, the craziness of the <laughs> Trying to the hide start. behind you. Yeah. But then the race director's like, no, 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 you come stand front and center. Uh, I mean, he had the number one bibs. He's yeah. like, you, you're right here, pal. Wow. You can't the gym just like, He's like, great. <laughs> yeah. I have to go pee. Yeah. He needs to get, like, a mustache in disguise. <laughs> Something right before the race. That'd be funny. A little temporary one just to rip it off. Right. Someone it's long hair on mullet. He needs to go with the mullet. He, he's had long hair before, though. I don't think he's ever had a mustache. A good one. I mean, he might anyway. not be able to grow one. <laughs> yeah. So uh, how was the, for you, I don't, I don't know how you generally run your races, but how was the, how was it different with that big of a pack, having to have all your mandatory gear? Was that different for you? Or are you more of a... He's used to that from backcountry skiing, though. Yeah. Yeah, I, I am somewhat. Similar, right? I'm not used to, to racing with that much weight. Yeah. Right. Um, but the the gear requirements for UTMF are about the same as UTMB. Oh, okay. So, so you had that dialed. Yeah, so I had that pretty well dialed. Okay. That wasn't a problem. And then that's the race where you had some stomach problems, right? Yeah. UTMB. And how how early did that start on you? It was about mile 30 when I okay. entered Italy. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to say, I don't want to hit Italy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too much cappuccino. I just, yeah, I remember I just got to this pass in the fog, and some guy's like, welcome to Italy. And then I had to go. <laughs> some mafia guy. Yeah, yeah. exactly, right? <laughs> you have to pay him. Yeah. To welcome for, to Italy. Give me some euros. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. And so mile 30, because you, was it 78 that you decided you were done? Yep. So was it from 30 to 78 you just had issues, or did it's it come out? Much. Really? Yeah. So like 48 miles of just not feeling good. Yeah, just kind of uh, coming out both ends. Oh, yeah. wow. I had yeah. one of those days. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. Kind of a lot like what uh, Claire Gallagher had going on. They frown on that in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> Leave no trace in Italy, they say. Yeah. <laughs> or they should. Right. <laughs> so... Do you do you know what attributed to that? I mean, was I it food was it hydration? Was it was you, before the race you weren't feeling well? Do you have poisoned you? Yeah, no. I was Jim came over and gave you a little poke of something. Yeah, <laughs> um, I was feeling fine before the race. I think it's that um, my body is like turned against the gels I've been using for so many years. Okay, mm-hmm. just kind of you know. getting used to them and need something new. Yeah, and I just got to the point where I that's all I had to use. I've, I've just gotten used to using nothing but gels for right. hundreds. Okay. Um, but I can't do that anymore, I guess. Or at least what I have been using. Okay. Yeah, that's what happens so. when you get older. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it does. You got to go with something a little more whole. M- mix it up. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So I just got to the point where my stomach was just wrecked and I couldn't take in any food. Yeah. I just, yeah. Was that, for you, was that a hard decision to say I'm done with this race? No I mean, one were you UTMB. feeling good right before that? Before mile 30? Um... <sighs> You know, despite my efforts to pace it well, you know, even in the first 30, I thought, you know, I'm going too fast. Yeah. So, you know, there was that going on. Everybody was going too fast. Everybody was going too fast, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, you had freaking Zach and Jim up front. Yeah. And Jillian and... Going crazy. And the Louise. Yeah. yeah. Run, running like little kindergartners, right? Yeah. Just the reset. Yeah. No! It's, yeah, exactly. It's pretty nuts. Yeah, how fast they were going. Yeah. 
I mean, they were an hour ahead of me at mile 50. Yeah. Wow. I wasn't running slow. No, you weren't. Yeah. <laughs> Man. So, uh, yeah, I think I was in 14th at mile 50. Um, um, oh, yeah. And I, I think at one point you almost got – you were, like, close to top 10. And I think I might have sent you a text that said, oh, he's coming. Oh yeah, he's bringing it now. Because I wasn't, I wasn't online. That was probably either. after halfway. Yeah, sometime maybe I after. I think you crept right into the top ten at one point, really yeah. close to. It. I was like, oh, here he comes. I, yeah, I think coming off the Grand Call Foray into Switzerland, I was with uh, Damian Hall, uh-huh. who ended up taking eighth okay. or seventh or something. And you were running with him. Yeah, so I was with those guys. Hmm. Um, but I felt awful coming off that thing, and I couldn't keep food down. Right. Um, and I don't know why I mixed up, like, aid stations in my mind. I thought my crew would be at La Foley, which is um, that first aid station in Switzerland. They weren't there. Mm-hmm. And that, like, kind of threw me for a loop. And I wasn't sure what to do. And I couldn't – nothing in the aid station would work for me for as far as fueling. What was uh, that like? I mean, what, like, their aid stations. What, what, nothing worked for you. What was it? Or did you know what some of it was? I mean, it's like a lot of uh, bread and okay. cheese and chocolate and stuff like that. <laughs> and, you know, honestly, what I, Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> what I should have done, what may have saved my race, is Coke. But I had sworn off Coke. Had you? I had sworn it off. Why? Because I, it's too easy for me to have too much of it, and it wrecks my stomach if I do. And I'm like, all right, just right. no more. Yeah. Um, but in hindsight, that could have brought me back. Yeah. It's it like the only real. thing I could, probably could have handled. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Bread would be hard, and I think. Yeah, I, I think that once once you're just you're already just going both ends. No, bread might be the sponge that helps the I backside. Don't I don't know. I don't know, man. I would ch- I would chance that. Would you? <laughs> yeah. Eat a whole bunch of French bread and cheese. And yeah, clog me definitely up. go with the cheese. Yeah. Clog that up. And mile uh, seventy eight was. I mean. So so yeah so that was uh, Champex Lock. So I just remember that climbed the aid station, I'd slowed down to like almost a crawl. I'm getting past like crazy and I can't put food down. Um, and also in my mind is the fact that I'd signed up for Run Rabbit Run, which oh, was two weeks after. Yeah. I'm like, well, you know, is it worth beating myself up anymore? Maybe right. I could That's smart. Well, Run Rabbit. So, so, yeah, I called it Champex. Um, I still, I'm like, ah, maybe I, maybe I shouldn't have done that, but it is what it is. Right. So I'll and go back to UTMB for sure. Okay, well, yeah. that was my next question. You want to go back there? See, yeah. So you podiumed at, at um, Western. Western. So that means you get a free trip. Yeah. For n- next year. Uh, to, yeah, somewhere in the world. I yeah. Guess. So 2019, where are you going? That's a good question. Because like, it's not totally up to me. Okay. Oh. They have available. So oh, gotcha. And I'd like to go to uh, the Tarawera New Zealand race. Oh, that would That'd be cool. So yeah. Cool. Yeah. Or like Marathon Disables or... Oh. Um, right on. Yeah, there's a lot to choose from. Man, that's really Ultra cool. I didn't Australia. know they did that. That's really cool. The Australian ones? Yeah. 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 Tarawera would have me. That'd be near it's, the top of my list. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's too bad that Grand Raid isn't part of the World Tour anymore because I want to do that for sure. Yeah. yeah. Actually, Seth Swanson was telling me the start at Grand Raid is even more impressive than UTMB. Where's uh, that at? It's this little island in the Indian Ocean, like by Madagascar. Mm, yeah, and yeah. just the whole population goes nuts for that race. Right. So anyway, oh, that would be cool. It. That'd be really it's, cool. It's way more technical than UTMB or UTMF. More right. vert. <clears throat> it's pretty remote, meaning it's out in the middle of the Indian Ocean too. Yeah, and right. they have a animation movie called Madagascar. <laughs> <laughs> I got kids. What do you say? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so UTMB had two weeks till two Run weeks. Rabbit. Yeah. Holy cow. So, what nice. was your recovery like? Just come home and chill? Um, not completely. No, I still would. You know, because I work an office job, like I want to mm-hmm. move around a few times a day. So, you know, I would still get on the treadmill a little bit in the morning and read, right. and like go out and jog at lunchtime. Just to keep recovery the, runs. Yeah, keep the blood flowing. Yeah. So the it wasn't much. Again. What's that? Get getting the legs turning over yeah, again. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And you didn't spend, <clears throat> you weren't spent from UTMB, right? Right. Because <laughs> yeah, even though cause I mean, seventy miles in there is still seventy eight yeah. miles. Seventy eight, like twenty four thousand. Core per. muscles were yeah. sore. Oh yeah, so, Ralphin. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I wasn't totally spent, um, and that definitely helped. Uh, but even if I went the whole distance, I think I could have done pretty well at Run Rabbit Run. Yeah. Wow. And I did have confidence knowing that I've. I'd done hundreds two weeks apart before. Like mm-hmm. I think after I ran Wasatch, I ran the uh, Stagecoach 100 down 
at the Grand Canyon. Oh, yeah. And That's one Ian puts I on. It, like, I did pretty well. So I'm like, all right, two weeks is like just enough time to like recover pretty well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Big yeah, hundred. Yeah, Boston Fitness, <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. It's like you kind of double dip from one training block. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. So I'm going to use that from now on. Double dip. I'm going to double dip. You're going to start <laughs> double dipping. Yeah. If you're going to race, I'm racing two weeks apart. Yeah. Ah, this weight I mean, sucks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> too easy to get out of shape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, so Run Rabbit Run was your fifth time, right? Yeah. But this time was a completely different course, right? And it was no, like, it, wasn't it wasn't completely different. Okay. They, they made some changes. Made yeah, some they changes. changed a few sections. When then was it harder, more technical? It or? was harder. Okay, more technical. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I think it was more for. Um, but yeah, like the crux section now is like just after mile 70, you do this really steep climb uh, of what's called the Grouse Trail. It's actually a famous mountain biking trail. It's a bunch of rock slabs oh, that they wow. ride down. Uh, but yeah, you got to climb up them. Gotcha. And the trail is kind of hard to follow at night. So that's, that's where... That's wheelhouse, climbing up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And however, like Schlarb totally dropped me on that section. So... <laughs> yeah. 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 So, but your fifth time, so you like that race then? I do. Is that five yeah. times? Pretty, you know, not too far of a drive, not too far away. No, it's five and a half hours. Right. Uh, Steamboat's cool. Yeah, it is a cool place. I mean, mm-hmm. because it was my first hundred, I kind of have like a connection with that race. Yeah, yeah. I can see and that. There, there's prize money. Yeah, <laughs> that's a little that, bit. Yeah. That's that's pretty. Those are big checks. Yeah, like literally big yeah. checks. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> I got to keep it this time. Did you? Yeah. Oh, they didn't take it back. They know uh-huh. I got to use this next year. It's like I'm exactly. see if I can. I'm tying this down to the top of my car. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You couldn't drive the little Subaru over. You had to take the big one over. Yeah, touch, Bring strap it down. Home. So you finished second at Run Rabbit, uh, 1933. Yeah. What was the winning time? Uh, it was like 1847. Okay. Yeah. And he like he finishes that race really well. Does he? Yeah. I mean, we. It was interesting. Um, Schlarp went out. He led the race for I think the first 20 or so, and then he kind of bonked. And I passed him at like mile forty. Right. He's like, "Oh, I'm so tight." Like, and he was thinking of dropping. Wow. <laughs> was he just messing with you at that point? No, no, he really did. Like he was he just was legit. He was struggling. It wasn't gamesmanship. Yeah. <laughs> but then I, you know, because they changed the course this year, um, you have to have your headlamp earlier. Right. If that makes sense. And I didn't yeah. have a crew, so anyway, I failed to put my headlamp in the right drop bag, and I was caught in the dark. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Right after I passed Jason. So I'm kind of shuffling along, um, and thankfully someone at the next aid station gave me a headlamp, right? And was able to get to where my my big lamp was stored. Wow, that's anyway. Great. So like that, that cost me some, and I spent some time just eating ramen at the aid stations because I didn't know what else to eat. Right, because your stomach was a little yeah. on the outs. And then I just kept thinking, is this isn't the same as Fuji? This ramen sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then so then so, so Jason actually passed me during that time. And I caught up with him around mile 50. We ran together for about 10 miles. Um, but then, like, the last 35 after mile 70, he really hammered it. Yeah. Very impressive. Nice. Oh. So. And then how did how did your race go? So third, how far was third behind you? Um, so Browning, yeah. he was, I think, at mile 70, he was, like, 20 minutes back. And we pretty much maintained that gap till the end of the race. Right. Okay. I could see his headlamp coming up the slabs. I'm like, oh boy. I don't know who it was. Yeah, you just knew somebody was somebody coming. Was coming. Yeah. Right. And how did that would that that did that adjust or change your strategy for fin- finishing the race? Were you kind of like being chased down, or were you just kind of nope? I'll just lock in what I do, or or how did that? I did feel kind of chased. Yeah. yeah. And I'm used to being chased by Browning late in races. <laughs> <laughs> at, right. at Western and Run Rabbit Run, it's happened uh-huh. several times. Yeah, it's funny. He's a good so closer. It's like there's no room for mistakes. Right. Yep. And how did <clears throat> with that race, did you were you happy how that one turned out for you, considering, you know, two weeks after UTMB and the stomach issues, how did the nutrition change or work better for you at Run Rabbit from UTMB? Uh, I mean, I think I was better off just having more variety. Okay. And it's it still was far from ideal. I feel like I could have run under 19 hours with better nutrition, for sure. Okay. Yeah. So I look forward to going back and getting that right. Are you going back next year? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's my race. That's my race. Right. second place, man. Exactly. I, I just go to. I told the race director, as long as this thing is at least two weeks after UTMB, I'll come every year. Right. Wow. So. So what, have you thought about that? Have you thought about what the... If you, you say you had better nutrition, you would have finished. What is what? Have you thought that through yet? Like, what's that going to be for you in the future? Um, I think just better variety 
you know, just trying to down one kind of gel for the whole race. That just doesn't work anymore. So, right. um, mixing it up. yeah, just mixing it up and finding right. the right carbohydrates I need. Yeah. Now, Joel mentioned it earlier. Are you, are you, can you eat whole food when you run or are you more quick digest, get that sugar in, get that whatever in, or you, can you have whole food? Yeah, I have a hard time with whole food during races. races. I yeah. mean, ramen I could do, but you have to stop to eat ramen, so it wasn't yeah. a deal. Well, can so. You, so, like, let's take a quesadilla for an example. Yeah. Because, one, they're good. That's whole food. Take, I like, a whole just a smidge. Can you do that? Would like, you just yeah. be able to handle that? Yeah, just a smidge. I yeah. can do that. Like, yeah. like two bites. Right? Yeah. You, like, you're walking out of the aid station, you got two bites in, and you're down the road. And you got carbohydrates, you got some fats. Um, if you're lucky, maybe a little protein in there, too. Yeah. And not so much that you, your stomach just all of a sudden, everything shuts Dumped down, in there. right? To try like, to uh, digest that. Right. So Have you tried that? Um, you know, I'm trying to think last time I tried, I think I, I ran your A100, and I did try to, like, eat more solid food. And it didn't work that well for me. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I think I just need quicker calories. Right. Um, but, but still, I think in the gel form, that's how I run best because I, I don't like to stop. Right. It's just and, on I don't, and I don't <coughs> like to chew. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. We need a we need a smoothie for him. Yeah. Yeah. That's Something like that. Something I can put in my bottle. Uh-huh. Beaverhead has smoothies at the last aid station. Right. And they're really good. They, had that, they have those hand crank mixers. <laughs> yeah. I think he had a gas-powered margarita maker. Yeah. <laughs> it was that pretty could, good. That would be dangerous. Yeah. So talk about whole food. I had a whole glass of mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I ate a whole quesadilla, a whole pizza. That's whole food. In the blender? <laughs> Why not? I didn't dare. They didn't have it. That could be bad. Um, um Hmm. So so, run rabbit run. Was that the last race you're doing this year? You kind of just shutting down. No, you got no. more. No, he's like shaking his head like, <laughs> yeah, oh, no man, nope. What you do you got to figure out the nutrition thing? Yeah, that's a good. Yeah. What do you got going? You got some big ones this year, or just some kind of <laughs> low key stuff, or what do you got? I'm gonna do North Face 50 again. Are you? Okay. Yeah, I've done nice. that last. They moved that this year. It's a little bit earlier, isn't it? Like mid- it is. It's in mid November. Mid November. Down San Francisco. Yeah. yeah, it's a better course, I think. Oh, uh, so it? now it finishes going across the Golden Gate Bridge. Okay, that's right. The city, yeah, it's really nice. That's cool. So, it's yeah, I mean, it's be a, that's going to be a big race. Oh yeah, it always is. I know, but it's this year there's a lot of fast people there. Yeah, not just all, you, but if they all if they all stick show up in it. healthy, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. The later races, some people are burnt out. They're hurt. Yeah, they're tired. Exactly. Yep. So I think but the last thing I saw with Wamsley, he wasn't even sure if he was going to do. Right. Oh, he's doing it. He is for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. I know Zach's he's in. Doing it. Zach. Okay, might be a good race. And yeah. Mark's doing it. Yeah, that's three fast people out front. Just right oh, there. Hayden's going to do it. I think. Is he? Oh yeah. Yeah. That'll be fun. So we got su- four really fast people up front. So have you? And have you done that one? Then you said you have, right? Yeah, I've done okay. the last four years. And how have you done? How have you fared there? Oh, I've done okay. I mean, I I think my first year I was twenty first, and then I was like nineteenth, nineteenth, and last year I was twelfth. Okay. And just like a few minutes out of the top ten. Wow, so I guess those fast races, that's what it's about in that thick of field. It's yeah. minutes now. Like, Oh, yeah. You know oh, what I mean? for sure. It was like, you know, time and aid stations is what cost me uh, oh. top ten. Wow. So, so that's a gel thing. I need a crew this year. For yeah, sure. I, yeah. Think, for I think for that one you need a crew. Yeah, yeah. you just need the handoff. Yeah, exactly. Just that's go. So you you see, stop. like, when Zach goes through those aid stations, yeah. he's getting stuff. He, his crew can barely hand stuff to him because he's going so fast so, yeah. on those things. Yep. Yeah, it's not like a lot of people. It's not refilling a bottle. It's getting a brand new bottle. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yep. It's like, oh, yeah, my, for sure. Take my empty one. Yeah. Here's a full one. It's not. Fill this it's up. It's like a relay. You know, you see those relay runners trying to grab the baton. It's like that. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> that's a work okay with you having a crew for that. Yeah. Because that's, to be competitive, you have you to ha- have Yeah, one. something like that yeah, you would true. do for sure. Otherwise, like you said, minutes away from aid station stuff. Right. We, we, need, we need to talk to your sponsor about getting some help out there with that. Yeah. 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 No, I'm serious. I think that's, yeah. the sponsors really need to step up for, for that. For those type and, of events. And make sure that their their elite runners have the help that they need. Yeah. I yeah. think it's a big difference maker. It, it, it sure is. I remember at, at UTMF, uh, Seth Swanson and Dylan Bowman had excellent support from nor- the North Face yeah. at the aid stations. Right. And they were in and out so fast. Yeah, yeah. see? Makes you can difference. get that. Especially in a fast race like the North Face race. You right, know, exactly. Where it's faster, like you're saying, it's just so critical. Which is yeah. kind of weird because it's the North Face race. Yeah. That you run for Ultra. Yeah. 
But they're owned by the same company. Yeah. No, oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, right? No, yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you can get some North Face help. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Maybe, so, yeah. We can work that somehow. Pull, pull some strings. Yeah. yeah. Say, hey, fellas, we got to cut some time. Yeah. I think you got enough time to put the request in for that. Yeah. yeah. And we'll Let's start it. Can do. We'll start it. Mm-hmm. It's a Go Crew Me account. It's the GoFundMe. <laughs> yeah, right. We'll start a new site. Go Crew Me. <laughs> People can do it all over the country. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. I need a crew. Put it on Go Crew Me. Yep. <laughs> we won't do the Go Pace Me. We'll just do the Go Crew Me. Yeah, screw uh, that. I don't want to pace anybody. So what's the, what's the biggest, for you, especially this year where you did a little bit more different places, in your mind, for the people that don't know, like myself, people that listen to the show, what's the differences racing in Europe, racing in in the Utah Mount Fuji compared to <laughs> <laughs> compared to Run Rabbit Run or Westerns? I mean, Westerns a big race. It's one of the biggest media ones in the U.S. Yeah. If yeah. not the biggest, right? Yeah. For trail running, for sure. So it's what? Where does that compare compared to Europe? What's the What's the differences? <laughs> not, even, not even close. Yeah, yeah. and that's what's no. funny. He's saying this, and yeah. he's smiling like yeah. that. It doesn't. It's compare. not like magnitude of five. Or ten. Yeah, it's, it's like, like yeah. you can't compare it because right. that's right. how intense and electric it is over yep. his other races. Yeah, it's something I think all runners should experience the UTMB races. Yeah. So. And do you like that? I mean, some people don't, but do you? How, I mean, maybe one or two times. I mean, is that something you enjoy? Yeah, I think it was very inspiring to see that much enthusiasm for the sport. Yeah, right. no, that's true. That's really cool. Yeah. Because we talk about the growth of it here in the States. Joe had a, a stat from our Thursday show that from a certain oh, year yeah, to a certain... Oh, yeah, 2004, 2014, the number of trail races grew by 343%. <laughs> yeah, and, that, oh, and right. we were doing math, but we're not good at it. That's big. Right. We just say that's a big, big increase. So. Right, and then Carl, I read this little interview by Carl uh, the last few days, and he's like, the mar- it's just saturated now. Yeah. And the problem with that is some of the, the smaller, low-key races are going to be hurt by that yeah. because everybody's going to be trying to get a qualifier race for yeah. a qualifier race that gets into a big race. Yeah. It's true. But that's just how it is. It's popular. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. So we see that that's growth. But I mean, just because I hear your stories and we talk to other people and they're like, it is so intense. Just like we were talking to Tara and she's like, it's kind of nerve-wracking. Before, <laughs> like hours before a race because it right. starts at six or whatever. So you got all day to, to think about wait. it, and then the drums start, and then you got to line up early, and then it's just yeah. the nerves. So it's a different ball game. Yeah, it's like you see the enthusiasm Americans have for football and basketball. Like, yeah, it's that, and for trail running and in Europe, that's cool. That's awesome. So yeah. now with UTMB, this was your first year, and we've said it on the show. Talk to people who have done it. That first year experience will go a long way for the next time. Like, there's things you probably like. Oh, I you know, gotta do this. I can't do this. I know the you course. Get your stomach dialed. Yeah. 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 You already got your gear dialed. Yeah. Oh, what yeah. pack are you using? That was a good looking pack, by the way. It was yellow. Oh, yeah. Um, Is that a UD pack? It's a Gravel pack. Gravel? Gravel, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, so climbing. Gravel's, yeah, they've gotten into trail running they stuff. They have? Yeah. Huh. It's pretty right. cool. I got to go meet the owner of Gravel and tour his well, I did see that picture you posted on the, the yeah, old Facebook. Yeah. Wow. I That's didn't awesome. Know that. Yep. That, that makes sense now. The colors, yeah, yellow. That's Gravel's colors. Yep. Okay. Right on. Yeah, so um, I use their their speed light pack. Speed light. And it's a trail running pack. Yeah. Okay. Yep, and then I use their uh, three way their, their poles. Um, they they break three ways anyway. Yeah, I, folding yeah. poles, yeah, like, yeah. Folding, yeah. folding poles, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you like using poles? Um, yeah, you know, because I ski tour so much, I've gotten used to using poles. So, right. yeah, I think that's all right. They're very f- efficient mm-hmm. for steep climbs. Okay, so let's touch on ski touring a little bit. So do you do mostly just backcountry powder skiing, or are you kind of more into that, that schemo go fast race type of thing? Or a little bit both? That's a bit of both. Yeah? Yeah. Yep. Um, and I, I like to, to do the, like, the more technical stuff. Like, right. Like, for example... Um, I like to go up to the Lone Peak Zurich and like climb one of the routes on the walls and then ski off the right. other side and that kind of thing. So, okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Right. That's what, that's you, that's good. Like, so do you run much in the winter or do you just kind of? You just all ski. Just kind of. No, I'll time run. to take breaks. So you do your treadmill. treadmill yeah. And stuff. Yep. Treadmill. Okay. So I'll mix it up. Yeah. Right. I'll still race through the winter. Okay. Running. So, yep. Running races. What do you, do you have anything after North Face or have you? Got that far ahead. Um, well, yeah. What's your What's your plan for next year? For next year, well, I, 
this rate there's the across the years race down in Phoenix. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really mm-hmm. curious what I can do in 24 hours. So I might try that. Just, just awesome. got to find out. You know, it's boring. You're running in a right. mile loop for 24 hours. But you can just hide in know. bathrooms, save some time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've read about it. <laughs> yeah, I heard that's a thing. So you're going to do that one, you think? I might. Yeah. yeah. Give that shot? Yeah. That's totally on the other end of the spectrum. It is. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's very different. Yeah, so. It's totally different. I mean, coming from... Um, that dude's going way fast. Um Coming from Utah backcountry boy to going down to the the desert and running loops on this flat track, that's at the other end. Yeah, it which is. is cool to see that you're you're you're, you're trying to find that range, uh-huh. right? Yeah, you're just not pigeonholing yourself into okay. I, I only backcountry ski in the Cottonwoods. I only climb, uh, you know, Grant in the Cottonwoods. I might go down to some sandstone in, in Zion. And I only fish these holes, right? Yeah. You're like. I'm going to go see about this. Yeah. See what I can do. That's cool. Yeah. Thanks. Um, and it'd be a good chance to just test out nutrition plans. Oh, yeah. You that's know. really there smart. You Especially that's when smart. you're probably going faster, yeah, consistent. Like, like, you know right. I mean? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's not that much farther outside the treadmill running than he already <laughs> does, right? Except now he's got to go loops. He doesn't have to read. Yeah. That's going to help. I'm sure <laughs> we can figure that out, right? <laughs> he, run a, just he, <laughs> he can get like a pacer. <laughs> and they have, like, pages on the back. Oh, I got you. He Someone running. <laughs> good luck whoever wants to run that fast. Well, he can get a handful of people, right? <laughs> He'd have to be too close to read it. Yeah, he would. Um, so you're thinking about that. And like Joel mentioned, is there anything, like, next year you're already looking at? or? Well, besides Run, Rabbit, Run and UTMB. And, and Western. I'll and West, oh, you're going back to Western? Yeah. That's yeah. a big year right there. Yeah. 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 You doing it? Do you do any short stuff? When I say short, I under should, 50 miles. I should do more short stuff. Right? But you don't really. But it's like when I have a free Saturday, it's like, oh, well, you want to go, go run ski. far, you know, yeah. or go, yeah, go climb go or ski. ski, do something else. Right. Yeah. So That makes sense. Um, you know, one of my sponsors is Liberty Mountain, and they sponsor the uh, Cirque Series. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So oh, they, I think I'll do one of those races yeah. next year for them. So That looks hard. Yeah. It's yeah. a lot of fast running in a short period of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very different. Up, it is. So. A lot of that. Do you like the technical stuff, too, when you're running? Yeah, yeah, I do. Because of your background too, it's kind of nice. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, and just you know, I'm I'm on the West Ridge of Grandeur so much, so I get used to that more technical running. Right. Yeah. So it's got to play an advantage when you're going to these other races, though. You know, I mean, not that other people don't run technical, but you definitely hear people that, well, that are comfort new to there. it. Yeah, the comfort level is there, right. and it might be different and more technical, or more, you know, or different technical, but you are come more comfortable with it than maybe some that are there too. So. Yeah. So you got any skiing or climbing that you want to, like, focus on the, this this fall or winter? Things that, like, projects you're like, gosh, I want to I get on that. Yeah. Um, I would love to go back to Gannett Peak mm-hmm. and try and do it car to car in under 10 hours. Wow. So uh, I did it in, like, 17 hours round trip with a friend a couple of years ago uh-huh. from the Green River Lakes Trailhead. Okay. Um, but we had to do a lot of boulder hopping. We kind of got off course and stuff, so it was a lot slower than right. it could have been. So I'd love to go back and do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I have this fantasy of doing climbing a 513 and running a 100 miler in 13 hours in the same day. Dude, that's um, crazy. I don't know. <laughs> so we'll see. Keep that in the back burner. So where would you do that at? That's the question, right? Is where are you going to do that at? Yeah, I don't, you know... Because it's got to be 513 sport. It's got to be outside. You can't do it inside. That doesn't count. Yeah. Come on now. No. Yeah, I guess so. No, it's got to be <laughs> outside. Uh, Joe's you know, throwing down the rules. 513 sport or trad? It'd be sport. Okay. Yeah, that's be sport. Um, you know, the Salt Flats course out in the West Desert. All right. Yeah. Yep. There's that uh, sport climbing area, the Pipe Dream. No, Pop Tire Cave. All right. Um, and it's got 513 routes out there. Yes, it does. Okay. There you go. So, All right. Maybe. And a fast course it's for a fast running. fast course, yeah. yeah. And it's, what's that, six, seven weeks out from Western, so you got time to recover. <laughs> yeah. Oh, All yeah. right, it's a plan. That's leg turnover for yeah. Western. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, <laughs> on the salt it flat is. Area. I love that course. Yeah. yeah. Have you run salt flats in? I have. Okay. Yeah, I ran it uh, two years ago in like 1430. Oh, my God. It was a really windy day, so it could it be done slow. a lot faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah it could yeah. be. I'm like, 1430, I hit mile 50. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, that's cool. That'd be that'd be a good adventure. Yeah, it would be. Right, I yeah. like that the multi-sport type of thing. Yeah, that's cool. Uh huh. It's like the new. Th- and the then, new thing. if it's a big snow year, you can 
go ski maybe Superior. After. <laughs> yeah. yeah, something like that, right? Could be. Mr. Yeah, a little like extra that. time. Yeah, it's uh-huh. the, tr- the trifecta. Yeah, I like and it. That's what it'd be. The trifecta of what uh-huh. you want to do. Yeah, we'll see. All right, that's all. How all long? Right. Do you, how long do you see? Have you even thought about longevity in trail running? Is this something you want to do for a while? The because comp- you're, I mean, you're in the elite, competitive, everything. Have you thought about anything like that, or are you just kind of letting it go? How just it goes? Roll with it. I mean, I would hope that I'm uh, competing at the same level that Jeff Browning is at yeah. his age. You know? Right. So. Yeah, he's doing some amazing yeah. things. We we always talk about it. We we really want to see like. You and the, all those cowboys and Zach and all those, we want to see them run for 10, 15 more years at yeah. the level they're running at. And we're always concerned that, that that fear of missing out is driving them to not hit their potential, right? Just too, too much volume, yeah. too much racing. But I think well, you mix it up so much. You're skiing and you're climbing, right? So you're getting that cross training in. And the treadmill might save you. Yeah. I think you're right. You know yeah. what I mean? Yep. It's it's definitely it's lower impact. Right. Yeah. Less chance for some of the little knocks and ankles and right. silly stuff. Do you do most? I mean, obviously the, the treadmill is like total solitary. But when you're out running on the trails, are you running by yourself or you got somebody you go with? It's usually alone. Yeah. Just cause like I think that helps too in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's not. I guess not as competitive when I'm just running alone. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and we've talked about it too. Is in races so much you're by yourself. Yeah, you know, up, the up front yard. Yeah, well, I wouldn't know that, but yeah, I am in by myself sometimes too. So um, in the back, but when you're by yourself, it's just like training. Whereas we've talked, to, you know, people that run in groups primarily a lot, and they get into a race, and it's different when they're by themselves. You know, it's uh-huh. like a little little foreign for yep. them, I guess I should say. Yeah. Do you I do any? Nervous. Do you do any uh, strength training type stuff, or do you rely on that with all your round the clock other stuff? Um. I like to climb with a weight vest in the gym, mm-hmm. so I guess that counts as some strength yeah, training. Yeah, sure does. Oh, yeah, that's weight, that's weighted. Weighted. Pull-ups. Yeah, yeah uh, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'll I'll still use a uh, weight vest on the treadmill, yeah. like downhills and stuff. Okay. Oh, so. have to look what weight vest are you using? Uh, it's made by Ethos. Okay. It's just like it, it has. How uh, much does the vest weigh? Y- you can put it up to sixty pounds. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> but running with that much weight is not very enjoyable. Yeah, right. Like so how much do you use? Um, like maybe 15 to 20. Oh, my gosh. That's a lot. So That's crazy. How much are you using when you're climbing? Probably the same. Wow. Man, that's I amazing. can imagine running like when you don't have it on. You know what I mean? Like the yeah, difference no, right? that feels. That's yeah, got to be a pretty significant difference. Oh, yeah. Though. Yeah, just for sure. So yeah. are you always wearing that weight vest, or is it just when you're specific doing... Specific workouts. Just specific workouts, yeah. Like, like which ones? wearing it. Um, like if I wanted, I mean, if it's proprietary, I understand. You don't have to spill the beans. Yeah. <laughs> um, like I'll use it for like one mile intervals, uh, going like a six minute mile downhill. Okay. Yeah. Like a 3% decline. Yeah. yeah. How many bricks is that? One? That's two bricks. How many? Is that that's one a brick? brick? It's a two bricker? It's <laughs> a two bricker. <laughs> the, on the decline. Well, the machines, they'll go to 3% on their own. Yeah. And then beyond that, you have to use bricks. Okay. Yeah. So safely, without masonries, you can go three <laughs> percent. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <Without> mason skills. <laughs> yeah. Go to Dome Depot. I need a couple more bricks, man. Yeah, he's calling up Bryce Warren at that <laughs> point. It's Bryce, dude, I need some stonework done in the house. <laughs> yeah, I need some stonework on my treadmill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea, though. I'm, I think it's a good idea. Never thought of that. I'm, I'm thinking about getting a weight vest now. Are you? No, not really. I didn't say I, I'm not. I'm enjoying <laughs> losing some weight right now, <laughs> yeah. so I don't want to add I any. Can carry my ice cream with it. <laughs> yeah, right. Just, just put in your other vest and put All some right. weights in it. Yeah. Just load it up. That'll work. I think the weight vest will distribute the the Klondike bars better. <laughs> <laughs> Are they going to be frozen? Are you going to need to like yeah, uh, no, take the weight vest out of the freezer? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> as soon as they thaw, you know your workout's done. Yeah, I got yeah, you cooler about a mile down the road and go stick it in. <laughs> that's awesome. So when you do these workouts, that's one question I have. Have you ever had a coach, or do you have a coach, or this stuff you've just come up with based on what you do? I've just kind of made it up. Okay. Yeah, I've never had a coach. Okay. Gotcha. Um, but I pay attention to what other runners are doing. Yeah. Yeah. And do you have so, when you go to races? I mean, do you guys? Do you, I don't know how those you guys work. You guys, <clears throat> excuse me, share a lot of stuff. Do you talk about stuff, or is it just how you been? Good. See at the finish. 
Yeah, it's just kind of random chatter. Yeah. I mean, I've never had like an in-depth conversation about training during a race. Yeah. Right. Um, just bullshitting as you guys. Yeah, I usually have a lot of in-depth tra- conversation. I'm like, God, my training sucks. I <laughs> yeah, wish right. I would have trained. That's what my <laughs> <Yeah>. races sound like. <laughs> it's a little different. <laughs> yeah, my mind's a little different. It's like, damn, should have. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Well, I think it's really cool, um, everything you've done. And you really have. I still see you kind of flew under the radar for a still bit. Still are. Yeah. I, I, you're so, not like a... Which is cool. I like I that. I love it. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yet you have, and you've got some sponsors, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, Ultra yep. is your shoe sponsor. Who else do you have? You have Ultra. Uh, Gravel. Gravel. Yeah. Liberty distributes Gravel in America. Okay. Oh, okay. So that's yeah. a good So what else do they together? distribute that you can tap into? Pretty much everything. Liberty Mountain's <laughs> right? got it all. Yeah, they have everything. Yeah. Do they? Yeah, they've got all right. it all. Yeah. Their catalog I've got before, like, seriously, that thick. It's ginormous. Yeah, thick. and it's like phone book thick. Sorry, everybody's yeah. listening. How thick? Yeah, and people phone are like, book phone thick. book, what's that? Yeah, phone book. Yeah, um, Google, a phone book. <laughs> 1980s. Um, so, yeah, alters your, is that your, kind of your mate, your big one, though? Yeah. Okay, and what shoes sure. you wear, then? Do you alternate, or do you have a one that's your go-to? Um, for racing, I like the duos. Oh, so wow. it's more of a road, road shoe, shoe, but yeah. enough traction for most trails. Right. Okay. And just super light and mm-hmm. lots of cushion. Wow. So that's my favorite. Um, and, like, I actually use the Olympus 3s for Western. Oh, wow. Um, but they're they're kind of heavy. I kind of regret using those for yeah. such a long race. Gotcha. Well, any race, they're just really heavy. Heavy. But there's a lot of cushion. Yeah. But it's like, I don't know what. The trade-off. More. Yeah, the trade-off. Um. So, yeah, the Olympus and the Duos are my main shoes I've used lately. So you like the the extra cushion? I do. Okay. Yeah, for so such long races, I think it matters. It helps. Okay. Yeah. Because I know they have, like, the Lone Peaks and the other ones. That What's that it? Max Cushion shoe that they have for the road? Um, I can't think. I don't know. Oh, Paradigms? Or the yes. It's yeah. I think yeah. it's a Paradigm. Actually, I use those for Run Rabbit Run. They did wow. yeah, well. So the traction on the, the road shoe does pretty well on the trails? I think you? so. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. That's yep, good because enough. I hear a lot of people like their road shoes mm-hmm. and the trail shoes, you know, they're coming along for sure. Some people love them. Right. Right? Yeah. Um, I think if you just take the, that paradigm and just put a little bit more traction on that, you would have, like, the ultimate trail shoe okay. at that yeah. point. Yeah. That's what they should just, just tell do. them have a Mr. Potato Head for you. <laughs> Throw this sole on the bottom. Yeah, boom, right. We'll call Mr. it good. Potato Head. Yeah, that's what they do. <laughs> well, that's cool. I, I think... Uh, what you've done has been awesome, um, just because, like I said, it's a little quieter than some of the other people, which yeah. isn't a bad or a good thing. It's just different. Um, but we like having you in Utah because we yeah. still call you a local guy. Cause even yeah. though we're in Ogden, you're in Salt Lake. It's just fun yeah. to see, He's you know, like, boy. like Joel says, you know, he texted me, you know, at UTMB. So he's close to the top ten. Cause ah. Every time we do our gate, our uh, contest or we do or our predictions. Like, like a, a big race is coming up. Yeah, we do predictions yeah. for those so like on the North podcast. Face, it'll, we'll be like, all right, who's going to be top five? Cause yeah. We'll have to go five deep at North Face. Because it's a deep race. And right. so your name yeah. always enters those, those right. in our conversations. So yep. it's kind of fun to huh. officially get to meet you. Yeah. For one, um, instead of just stocking And, and put the heat on you for the North Face. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the heat on your sponsors. Oh, yeah, there's definitely a sponsor. they got to get your crew. That has to be essential. Yeah, that would be awesome. I think that awesome. needs to be part of your, your contract, contract next, next year. year. Yep. I need a crew at this race. I need a crew at this race. And I need yes. a whole box of Klondike bars next podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Next podcast. <laughs> I do oh, that's reasonable. Yeah, no, it's, it's not. not no, it's not. PC, thank you. It's not unreasonable. Yeah. They'll be like, why do you need so many cheese curds? <laughs> it's like, I've got, got a yeah. podcast scheduled yeah. with trail manners. Podcast. I need some IPAs, please. Yeah. A whole bunch of them. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, good luck. Yeah. Um, the North Face, and that's a big race. That'll be really fun to watch. It will all be the names show up to that. I mean, yeah. we enjoy watching from afar. Yeah. And then just whatever you do next year. I mean, you if you're going to do the 1313, uh, the, the let us know. Yeah. Challenge? Let us know. That'd be fun. Oh, okay. yeah, it's the same day as our trail running festival. That's all right. We well, it doesn't have to be, have to be salt flats. It could be some other. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. yeah. But still. Yeah, we'd love we'd to, we'd love to follow that. Yeah. I might do uh, the jackpot 100 miler down in Vegas oh, in yeah. February. Oh, you could um, do it there. Yeah. And that's yeah. a, that's Mount, a Mount Mount Charleston. Tour, so it's fast. Yeah. So yeah, Charleston. Uh huh. We'll see. There you go. Well, lots of lots of things Potential. brewing I right know. now. You'll right? have to let us know if you do one of those. That'd be really fun to follow and see how you did. So, well, Mark, thanks for taking the time. Thanks for uh, helping us get the word out that choir is okay. <laughs> <laughs> now I've broken through. <laughs> oh, oh, it's yeah. always been in the background, but now <laughs> I'm, I'm. You're gonna good. get hounded on. That's that. all right. I got video of me oh, doing some stuff, oh man. Gosh. It's good. It's good. My daughter's in choir, so i got to make sure she knows how legit 
you can be. And I'm going to think, see this guy? Yeah, I see that guy. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> He runs I'll, fast. You know what's going to happen, though? Is we're going to get so many comments on this podcast of people. It's like, I was in choir. Yeah, I was in choir. Yeah, totally. They're going to finally right. feel free. Yes. Yeah, like me right now. They're going to have that sing all the way home. They'll have the that car. connection with you, too. Yeah, all the way home in the car. I'm singing to you. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mark, thanks for taking Thank the time you. to join us. We'll get, let you get back to work, and uh, good luck in the future, and congratulations on everything you've accomplished. It's, it's pretty awesome uh, to see what you do. Thanks so much. All right, thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Trail Manners Podcast. We'd like to thank Mark Hammond for taking the time to join us today. We also want to encourage everybody to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Trail Manners or swing by the website at trailmanners.com. There you can check out our store page for the very few items we have left or you can hit us up on the contact page. Let us know what you want to see, who you want to hear, or if you would like to be on the show. Until next time, this is Eric Manning with Joel Hatch reminding you, you don't get what you wish for, you get what you work for. Now go get it.